The Legacy of Wisdom Project gathers and publishes answers to many of humanity's most pressing questions from some of our most experienced and profound leaders. As we approach the last phases of our life, what would be conscious awareness during this phase? The first thing that I was teaching in spiritual eldering was that you have to come to terms with your mortality. Nothing is going to happen without coming to terms with that. You're always going to avoid it. I had a situation. Uh, one of my friends was saying to his mother, why don't you go to the seminar that Reb Zalman is going to give? I'm not yet ready to die, she said. Okay, I met her later on in Florida. Oh, and then, so uh, he asked her, so what would you like to learn? I would like to learn how to get the respect I deserve. <laughs> Great. I come to Florida and I greet her. I open the door for her. I hold the chair for her. I do this, I do that. You know, do all kinds of things for her. She says, stop fussing over me. And that's when I told her, you will not get the respect you want to get if you don't learn to receive graciously what people are going to give you. So that's, that's an important part. Now, the, once I have come to terms with mortality, uh, then I find myself on the gurney, uh, prepared for an operation, and I'm being wheeled in the operating room. And at this point, I'm not coming to terms with mortality, I'm coming to terms with dying. You know, it has moved from the abstract into some very concrete thing. Now, if you are doing what religious Jews do, then at the end of the day, you have a review of the day, an examination of conscience. And one of the beautiful prayers that we have says, Master of the universe, behold, I forgive anyone who has angered me, who has hurt me, who has uh, done something bad against me, my money, and so on and so forth. I forgive them all. Let no one be punished on my account. Uh, whether they did it in this incarnation or in any other. It's interesting. That's how the text has it. There is a thing about being able to say at the end, into your hand I commend my spirit. These days when I uh, go and take a nap even, I sometimes do my out-breath and say, what would be if this were my last breath? Could I make peace with that? And I want to say, if there is no stress in the body uh, from emphysema or other pain, you know, then uh, a kind of conscious dying is a wonderful thing. Like Kubler-Ross has a statement where she says, one of her patients said, Ich will mein Sterben erleben. I want to live through my dying. Not like, uh, what's his name? No comedian. Um, he says, I don't mind dying as long as I don't have to be there. Yeah. So uh, I think that's an important part, the preparation for that. But you know what? I did it when I was yet in the yeshiva. That element of being able to say, I am not the source of my life, and I'm ready to give back my life. So I used to live in Borough Park, the yeshiva was on Eastern Parkway. So I would go with a BMT and then change to the IRT. When I went with the BMT, they had those little places at the end of the car where the conductor would sit. And I would always like to sit in them so I could meditate and so on. So it was when it comes to this station and it finally stops, I'll be gone. You know, and uh, a kind of a sense of not, not freaking out over it. I think that's an important part. There is another element. Um, I would like for people to read what's under the Dewey Decimal System 133 in the library. All the stuff on psychic research and life after death is there. Those people who have had out-of-body experiences, 
near-death experiences, have all come back and said how wonderful it is. In my little prayer room, I have a picture of Emanuel Swedenborg, who has written a remarkable series of books in which he describes what's going on in the other world. And he points out that when you cross over, there are some social workers who help you, who greet you and get you. Uh, you know, you're in a different place now, and this is how you work your way. I, I do believe that some of this is so. I don't know if it lasts forever and ever, because if I would have my, my druther druthers, I would like to just be a drop in the divine ocean and disappear. You know, to go into Shunyata, into Ein Sof, uh, that, that would be just fine, you know. Uh, but there is also the other thing, that the energy body that's being created in a lifetime, it doesn't disappear with death. One of my acupuncturist people told me a story. He was working in the gross anatomy lab, and the kidneys were cut out, and one of his colleagues was working in another part of the same room on the kidneys. When he put needles into the kidney meridian of a corpse, and the other guy says, what did you choose us now? Because the kidneys, there was a shiver in the kidneys. So, you know, death, we, we, what, what we don't know, the trouble is they haven't come back from there to tell us. Some of them have, but, you know, uh, I've had wonderful experiences with psychics, and some of them also were so stupid, you know, that, you, you know, the charlatans are there too, but when you get veridical things that hit the nail on the head, and they know that's great. I lie, 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 lie,